And uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess uh, I guess we'll get started here. I would appreciate if people would put their cameras on. Um, it's the culture by which we run the class. We want to create a community, not a bunch of black boxes, which is mainly what I see right now. So I appreciate those of you who um, who have turned on your camera. And the process here is if you, I, we want to interrupt and answer questions throughout. So if you have a question, uh, why don't you put it into the chat and um, then we'll call on you to ask it. And uh, Inder, who is um, part of my team, is going to be watching the chat and letting me know when there are some questions to be answered. So this is a session for you, um, meant to be informative about the global class that we are launching in a month. I guess that's right, just about a month. And um, to answer all your questions. And then we have two of our alumni who are entrepreneurs are going to be here talking about their story about how they started their company. And I know Srikanth is here. I can't tell right now if he's got his camera on, but Srikanth, do you want to just wave at people? Um, yeah. There, there you are. Okay. And Udara also. Um, we wave. They're hi, guys. Both, hi. They're both in Asia. Um, it's a little too early for Srikanth. Sorry, Srikanth, because he's in India. Um, but it's, I think it's good for Udara. So we tried to arrange things so that um, it works for Europe at least half the time and uh, for Asia the other half time. And anybody else here from Europe? We have one brave person who's up in the middle of the night. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna start by um, telling you a bit about the class and uh, first of all, just a reminder that we are almost at the registration deadline. So if you want to be in this fifth cohort, this is the time to sign up after after you hear what we, we've got to say. I know some of you have heard this before and in fact, to maybe understand a little bit more, ask other questions, um, but we are now at the deadline. So, you know, please keep that in mind. And um we are, so some of you um, may not know who University of California, San Francisco is, UCSF. Um, clearly the people in the Bay Area do, but people from other countries um, often haven't heard of us, which is kind of amazing because we are the University of California. We're a sister school to Berkeley, which everyone has heard of, um, but we are very specialized. So we do science and medicine and that's it. We are graduate students only. We have absolutely top tier research in virtually every area. We actually were the birthplace of biotechnology. So um, biotechnology as a field started in the 1970s, I think it was 76, uh, with a UCSF professor who teamed up with one of the first venture capitalists who funded his ideas, which were DNA. And they started a company called Genentech. And Genentech is um, very famous and has done many, many things since then, but really it spawned a whole industry and a whole approach to doing science and in, in life sciences. So um, we have a great history. We have seven Nobel laureates. Um, our high school system is absolutely top tier and we're ranked number 11 globally. And that's pretty amazing because we don't have undergrads, we don't have engineers, we don't have business school. We are just science and medicine. Um, Quickly about me, I, um, I've i been an entrepreneur pretty much all my life, although not necessarily in an entrepreneurial venture. Um, there I am, sort of me, um, selling lemonade as a kid. I did that. There was a thing you did in the United States a long time ago to make money uh, when you were a kid. I um, sort of, I took 10 years. Uh, I went to school and got an MBA as well as another master's degree. And um, I ended up in high tech, or as we called it, or, or tech, we would call it tech, deep tech now. Um, I didn't find it very interesting. So after 10 years doing uh, marketing and product management and strategy, I decided it was time to go find something I really liked. And I found this company called Vertex Pharmaceutical, 
which was an early biotech company, 1990s. Uh, this was a book about it. And it was written by a New York Times author, Barry Worth. And um, it's it, it was a joke, a billion dollar molecule. We were a company of 90 people at the time. And we had no revenues and we're just struggling to make our science work. But now we're a multi-billion dollar company. So it actually came to pass. And then, um, you know, since then I came to UCSF. I did a, a, a number of private companies where I had roles in um, either running the company, working for the venture capitalists or um, leading the business development, which are partnerships with pharmaceutical companies and uh, ended up at UCSF to set up the entrepreneurship effort here. Um, that's me, I love the global scene. So I, I think this was in, I was uh, there for the State Department in Morocco, I believe that's what that picture is. So I'm gonna skip over the next slide. That's just more about who I am, um, but I love to muck around in all aspects of entrepreneurship and something that I've learned that um, really impresses scientists is that I have a nature paper that was published in January um, on entrepreneurship, not on science, but you know, in my MBA business world, nobody really knows what nature is very much, uh, but at UCSF and this world, it seems to be super important. So anyway, that's a bit about me. Um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to tell you about the course, then we'll have our alumni entrepreneurs who waved in the beginning uh, tell their stories about how they started a company, and, and they were both in the course, of course, and then we want Q&A throughout. And um, Andrew, you're going to give me a shout out when you see things lined up in the Q&A. Yes? Yep, we'll do. Andrew, say hello. Inder is um, extremely important to anyone who takes this course because he is the glue that puts the whole thing together. So um, say hello, Inder, and wave if you haven't. Can't see you on that screen. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Um, so let's see why. It, okay. So um, one of the terms you'll learn is value proposition. So it's that term is what it sounds like. It's what we think the value is of something, anything. And, and in this case, the course. And what this course has become since I started it in 2020 is a real community for entrepreneurship. It's, it's focused on professionals, so it, that we will have some students in it, um, but the main focus is on professionals and it's a way to learn about science and medical startups and the business side of it. And we teach you uh, with guest lecturers who come from Silicon Valley, which is really the start the startup ecosystem that is the model for the world. Um, and we have three generations of entrepreneurs behind us now. So um, again, I'm just emphasizing, this is a quote from one of our alums because I get, I show them the value proposition. I said, what do you guys think? And they said, no, 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 you have it wrong. It's not a course, it's a community. It's, and it's so much more than a course. And, and I think that's really important. We have kept up an alumni community and we try to make sure it's very interactive while you're in the class. So our focus is purely life sciences and healthcare. That's what makes us different. One of the things that makes us different uh, from the many entrepreneurship courses that are out there. And while there are other life sciences healthcare courses, you have to be matriculated in Harvard or MIT or Columbia to take them. And this is a course that anybody can take. There's no application. It's also, it's, um, we talked about the Silicon Valley people who are guest lecturers. This is not an academic course. This is all practical. So we only invite people who are practicing now, whether they're CEOs themselves or venture capitalists, angel investors, um, people who are um, trying to think, lawyers, uh, practicing attorneys in Silicon Valley and so on. So what you get out of this is information you can use if you are interested in starting a company or you're part of an ecosystem and wanna know how it really works. It's very high touch. So we talked about interactivity. Um, our lectures are interactive and, and people do get up in the middle of the night to uh, from Europe or wherever to see the lectures. 
because they don't want to miss it, even though they're all recorded. They just want to be there so they can ask questions. In addition to the lectures, we have small groups that meet uh, periodically, and these groups are divided by sectors and life sciences. So if you're a therapeutics company, you may not have that much in common with a digital health company. And so we put you together with other people. I shouldn't say we, you self-select um, the sector that you're interested in, and you're welcome to go to all the sectors if you want, because you're not sure, or just pick the one that you're focused on. Um, and then you can, you'll be with mentors who come from that sector and the discussion can be focused on whatever you want. So an example would be uh, the FDA lecture. Um, clearly there are differences between um, a digital health company and a diagnostics company and therapeutics. And so you, we may not be able to go in depth on that in the lecture itself, but in the small group, you can have the discussion with a mentor who comes from that sector. And it's also a way to meet your classmates. Um, typically we get 10 to 20 people in, the, in one of these discussions, so it's much more intimate. Um, we also have a, a small group that, that are entrepreneurial war stories. So people will come and just do more of what we're doing tonight and in more depth, but how they started a company. And, what, what what was good and what wasn't so good and how they survived and were successful. Um, and then we have office hours. So office hours are with me. Um, they're discretionary, of course. I love to meet everybody in class and find out what they're into and how we can help. Um, so I encourage it. You might find that you get a note from me saying, hey, do you think you can come next week? Um, because it really helps everybody to know I can make connections because I know the class and um, you can maybe get some words of wisdom from me. And so another thing that we differentiates us is that we have the mindset and culture of Silicon Valley. So those of you who have been around this world at all know that Silicon Valley is a very special and different kind of place. Um, and it's cultural. It's, um, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, as I alluded to earlier, and there's a culture that's de developed around doing startups. And um, it's different than in many places of the world where uh, startups are, they're just more difficult to do. They have less, um, what's the, well, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, that they have, have um, less agreement from the people in, in the, the, the state, the country about the role of a startup. And it's just more difficult. And we will teach you the mindset here. And it's something you can utilize and something really important to understand because we've been so successful in getting companies started. And then lastly, we have a very active global alumni network. So I talked about that before. We do have events. We um, we have breakouts uh, during the class and after the class. So you get to know other people. Okay. So why to enroll content culture and network? Uh, first of all, you want to know if your idea can be a business. And this is where a lot of um, scientists and clinicians are sort of clueless. They, you know, they're passionate about what they're doing, and they only know um, science or medicine. So they don't really know how to assess: could this become a, a startup company? And not every idea can be or should be. So we're going to teach you how to figure this out. It's like the most essential thing you can get out of this class, uh, because if it can't be a business and you want to do a startup then you've just wasted a lot of time and resource working on something that cannot be successful. So that's where we start the class. Um, you'll also get to understand business concepts and business language, the lingo, so that you can actually have a discussion, uh, a business discussion with a, a potential pharmaceutical partner or an investor and understand what they're saying back. Um, you'll learn what investors think is important and it's not necessarily what you think it is. So you'll hear directly from um, angel investors who are the early stage and venture capitalists who are a slightly later stage. 
and they're going to explain what they look for and how their world works and how they're judged uh, so that you can understand what you need to do when you get in front of them. You'll absorb the startup culture just by being in the class and you'll join this great network. I'm gonna pause here to see if anyone has questions. Stephanie, it looks like we have one question in the chat. Um, and Idara actually tried answering it already, so, but uh, might be good to address. Okay. To the yeah, group. yeah, okay, I could. Um, who asked it? As a uh, lay, I believe. Okay. Um, okay. Lay, can you please? Yeah, Lay, I see it. Lay, could you, could you please ask your question out loud so everyone hears it? I don't know where Lay is. Lay, are you here? Okay, I guess I'll ask it because um, I don't know where she is. So the question is, if we don't have a global focus, we're only going to be in the U.S., is this a good fit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a U.S. US-centric course, and what you'll learn is how we do things here. So what I don't do is teach people how the, F how the um, equivalent of FDA works in Europe or how to market in Asia. Uh, we don't cover that at all. This is uh, the way we do things here in the United States and specifically Silicon Valley as a model. So I, I would absolutely consider it a good fit. Lay, did that answer your question? Maybe she's just off camera. Maybe. Okay, um, great. Any other questions before we move on? Well, All right. Along those lines, in, in these discussion groups, would there be you know international people that you could ask about the regulatory setup in their country and the marketing and that sort of thing? You know, probably not. I mean, if you if you had somebody from, say, Singapore in your group, um, they might or might not know the answer to that um, because they're they're here to learn. So it's really focused on I mean, you could. Yeah, it's really focused on how we do things here. Um, so but there will be people from other countries and maybe they maybe they do have some knowledge base. Um, so I'm, I guess the answer is I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if that helps, but thanks for the question. Yeah, who else? You can just uh, speak up. Oh, Omer. Uh, Hi. Yeah, so my question is um, how much of it is kind of generic versus specific to therapeutics versus digital health um, when it comes to like the topics that are discussed? How much is specific to one sector rather than overall? You know, it's primarily overall because the the difficulty of splitting it up is that a lot of people will turn off. It's like, I'm not interested in digital health. That's not a thing. So to, to, to try to satisfy everyone, uh, we keep it general and then might have some minor comments about, you know, it, certainly an answer to a question. Um, but it's, you know, for instance, IP. IP is a general talk, but there might be a slide on, um, here's how, you know, we're looking at SAS these days. So yeah, primarily general. Does that make sense? But the time the to, yeah, please. Um, and how long uh, are the sessions and how much time is there for kind of discussions within the sessions? Um, so the sessions, the, the lectures are two hours and, you know, the discussion is whatever it is. And so you know, if there are a lot of questions, great. Our speakers are always really happy to take questions, and we are too. And we just make it all fit. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not structured like, okay, we're going to do an hour and 45 minutes of lecture and then 15 minutes of discussion. Just like where I'm running this session today, we stop. I say, you know, hey, Charles, um, we have a question in the chat. Omar, would you ask your question? And we, we just stop. So I, I think it's really important not to have to wait till the end because then people sort of lose, why did they ask that question? They lose interest or whatever. So I really keep it moving, you know, and, and interactive during the talk. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Anyone else? All right, I'll move on. Um, 
trying to move on, trying to get my slide. Okay, so who takes this course? Um, you know, lots of different kinds of people, which is part of what makes it so interesting. Uh, so it it's primarily, and I looked at the sign-up list today, which is really amazing. Um, it's largely MDs and PhDs and, you know, related uh, people, though I'm happy to see a bunch of MBAs on this. Um, but it's all kinds of people. So not everybody's an entrepreneur. Not everyone has an idea to be an entrepreneur. Some people do. Some people are thinking about it. Some people are just testing out the waters to see if this is something that they like or could be a good fit. Um, we always have some academics, but it's not mainly academics. We have scientists. Um, sometimes they're from pharma some you know, or biotech. Um, we have physicians, we have people who run parts of ecosystems, tech transfer heads, and then we've had people just interested in innovation, corporate managers, um, advisors, consultants, we've had government people in, and investors. So it's a huge mix of people, which is what makes the network so valuable and really makes us pretty unique, I, I believe, in, um, in this field. So I'm going to just quickly go through some of the topics um, so you get a sense of what's in this class. As I mentioned, the most important thing that you can take away from this is how do you know if your idea is a business? And it's called opportunity analysis. And it's taught by Dave Hansel, who is uh, has done many companies. He's also an investor. He's a great guy. He's funny. He's very direct. Um, he answers all questions, and um, he's he puts us on the right path. I don't know, has anyone uh, here heard of Steve Blank? You want to raise your hand so I, we can see, um, yeah, a bunch of him. I unfortunately can't see everyone on the screen. So we have Steve Blank. Um, Steve really started this whole Lean Launchpad movement, uh, teaching at Stanford and then Berkeley. He created something called the i which is now a U.S. government program uh, to help people identify the opportunity um, by talking to lots and lots of people out there. And uh, he lectures at Stanford currently. Uh, so he is um, very approachable. He's the guy who wrote the textbooks and the, or the book books. Uh, he's not a PhD himself. He's just, he's done eight companies. He's a serial entrepreneur. So um, he gives a great talk and will help you understand how to assess your opportunity. I gave myself a lecture because I love teaching and it keeps me current. So I'm going to do business models. And the idea of a business model is how you're going to make money. So again, you can have a great idea and um think that it's, it's a real opportunity, but if you can't figure out how you're gonna make money out of it, then it's not going to be something that flies. If you won't get investors in it. So this is why we're not talking about nonprofits. We're talking about for-profit companies that actually make money. And I love to tell people about what works and what some of the models are out there in our industry. Um, Teresa Toller, is the person who gives the team building lecture. And Teresa has worked for a lot of VCs, venture capitalists, and helps them staff their companies. So a venture capitalist uh, may bring her in and say, okay, here's my portfolio of companies. These are the needs we have, who can you find? So she's had that experience working with them. Um, right now she's with a particular company, Graphite Bio. And so she goes back and forth. Anyway, she gives a great talk about what's important in building a team. Where do you find people? How do you network to people if you don't know anybody? And what do you look for? How do you structure the early team? Um, and very, again, very important. Vern Norville is with a very well-known Silicon Valley law firm called Wilson Sonsini. Uh, he is the go-to man for intellectual property. Uh, he, as he says, he spent almost four decades. He's an investor as well. He's doing a startup himself, and uh, he gives 
you know, really solid advice. And this is the kind of advice you'd pay $1,200 an hour for. Um, he's not going to give you a lot of advice on your particular company, but you can ask him questions. And he's been very kind to help some people who he felt were, you know, really deserving of that kind of help. So that's Vern. Um, we have two people who for the FDA lecture. Uh, Ilan is going to do most of the Dora. talk, helped by, um, helped by Telba. They do happen to be married. Uh, they are former FDA reviewers, and uh, but they're, they've been inside for many years, like about 20. So they really know how it works. And that's the way you want to learn about it. Um, partnering, super important for a number of our companies, generally more for therapeutics and and now some for diagnostics um, and digital health. And we have two people who are going to be addressing that. Leslie Stoles is a vice president at Johnson & Johnson Innovation. And she has been in this world for decades and is uh, really a top person to explain how it all works. Uh, so pharmaceuticals for therapeutics largely. And then Beth Rogozinski, uh, who now runs a therapeutics company, used to be a digital health person. In fact, she was in the early team of Pair Therapeutics, which is a digital therapeutics company. Um, so she'll explain the D Health partnering piece. And then they each can address um, you know, medical devices and diagnostics. Angel investors. So Angels are, um, they're the earlier stage investors, earlier than um, venture capitalists. I used to say the earliest, and now that's not necessarily true, um, but they, they come in before a venture capital, capitalist will. And we have two different perspectives. Darren Cook um, comes from a group called Life Science Angels, which is a Bay Area group, but also syndicates deals throughout the United States. So they know a lot about angel investment all over this country. And Ranjan Nag, um, who lectures at Stanford, is the director of the MIT Alumni Angels in Northern California. Um, he's also an angel investor through a different vehicle. Uh, and he, and even though it says MIT, they will hear deals from anybody that they think has a good deal. So you don't have to be an MIT grad to present to them. And he does mainly life science deals. Uh, so very insightful, um, both very, very good people to explain what angels look for and what they need in a company. And then we have our VCs. Um, we save them toward the end to toward the end. So by the time you see them, you're going to understand a lot about how all this works. Jorge Conde is a general partner at a very uh, well-known firm, Andresen Horowitz. Um, it's in the news all the time. It's really big deal Silicon Valley firm. And uh, so he, I'd call him a more traditional VC, whereas Leon Chen, who's with the Colin Group, um, tends to create companies. So a new trend in venture capital is company creation. They do it. Uh, that you as a scientist uh, come along with it, but they can put it together for people that they've got in their network or, or maybe even work for their company. And so he's going to explain that model. And, you know, they're both viable models for a startup. And then this is always a winning lecture, Protecting Yourself as a Founder by Ryan Howard. Um, Ryan started a company, I think it was around 2013, called Practice Fusion. It was an early digital health company. And he got seriously burned by the investors. So he said, I'm never going to do that again. And I'm going to tell people how to not do what I just did. So now it's, you know, 10 years later, and he loves sharing all his tips about, you know, watch out for this and don't do that. And if you see this in, in a contract, run away. Um, and there are people who said that this is the most impactful lecture of the whole group. I'm not sure I agree with that, but it certainly has impact. And it's great to, that he's always happy to, to do this. Um, so, and then we have entrepreneurs' stories. So um, we've invited, actually, it's three entrepreneurs to, I'll show you two. This is uh, Kevin Parker. It was a Stanford PhD. He got his PhD. He started this company, Cartography Bio. 
and he raised Series A as the first venture capital round. He raised $57 million. So kind of amazing. He's never had a job outside being an entrepreneur, and he's done really great. And then Sri Kasuri, um, different story. He founded a company called Octant Bio, and he was an academic. Um, he decided, no, I'm going to leave academe. I want to start a company. And he's just raised an $80 million Series B, which is the second venture capital round and has a collaboration with Bristol Myers Squibb. So they have different kinds of stories about how they got to where they are. And they're both really interesting. Um, this is a bit about the mentor-led sector discussion groups. It tells you something about who the mentors are. These are the different kinds of jobs they've had, um, serial entrepreneurs, et cetera. So you can see on that slide, really they're great discussions. And Brian Feth is a, a entrepreneur himself. Uh, he goes into his network and finds really interesting entrepreneurs to tell their stories about how they got to a point where they were successful. Um, he shares his story as well. It's all super interesting and helps you understand what it, it's really like to, you know, to do this. It's not easy, but these people have succeeded because they persisted. So not just persisted, but other reasons too. Um, we are very international. So right now we're, we've got six continents. I can't believe I've missed Antarctica. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, in 33 countries people have participated from. We, our active alumni community is currently over 400 people. But that's before this cohort. And we've done in-person meetups and virtual meetups and so on. Uh, this is our meetup in January of this year at JP Morgan Healthcare Week, which is the probably world's biggest life science healthcare investor conference, happens in San Francisco every year. And we had people from um, China, from Netherlands, from Singapore um, at this, as well as people who are around the United States. So that was very cool. First time we met each other since everything else is online. And then the bio conference is the Biotechnology Innovation, Innovation Organization, which is our international industry organization, just had a big conference in June in Boston. And, and here some of us are having dinner together. So great chance to actually meet people. So we're trying to make sure everybody stays connected even after the course is over and there's you know great benefit to that. Um, I personally love meeting alumni. This are a couple of or three of those. Hero, you're here now on yeah, way yeah, we met over at Berkeley and he's from Kanazawa. Uh, Stefano is uh, from Rome and I was uh, in Paris and saw Mirko uh, who was I think in our cohort one if I'm remembering. And uh, I just met with uh, the two men who are going to be telling you their entrepreneurial stories, uh, Yudara and Srikant. Srikant's from India, Yudara is from Singapore, and we uh, happily, uh, they were in the Bay Area, and we got a chance to meet. Um, so just a few comments, and I'm going to wrap this up quickly so we can hear from them. Uh, you know, people, people have loved this class, and... Uh, Cecilia runs an uh, ecosystem in Hong Kong. Um, Aaron is in Singapore. Uh, this ASTAR is a Singaporean government organization. And um, Ireland, I don't know if we have our Irish person who signed up on this. Are you here by any chance? Uh, Donald was in our first cohort. I love I love that he said this. <laughs> we're we're going to be it. We're going to be the people for the next decade. 94% um, recommended this course. The ones who didn't said, I just didn't have time to get to it. I was too busy in the ER or whatever. So, it, you know, it was just a question of, of making the time and, and the work. Um, so just a reminder about why you might want to take this. You're working on a startup. You're thinking about a startup. Some people just want to benchmark on what we're doing here in Silicon Valley. You know, like, oh, I got it. We're doing all these things and we miss this. You're going to absorb the culture. Uh, figure out if you're a good fit with this startup. We've had a number of academics who said, wow, this was really interesting. I'm going back to my lab. Um, and then we have some who say, well, this might be worth taking a shot. Um, it, having an interest in early stage venture for whatever reason and, and joining our global network. 
We have a number of partners from around the world, which is very cool. And so key facts reminding you the deadline is coming up in a week. Um, this is a 10 week class. It's a two plus hours a week, two hour lecture plus any groups you wanna do and office hours, it's up to you, no requirements. Uh, we have the online lectures, small groups and office hours. It's both live and recorded. So if you have to miss it, you can always watch the recording. 50% targeted to different time zones. You don't have to apply and the tuition is an amazingly basement price of $1,500. If you took this course at uh, Stanford or Berkeley, it would be five to $6,000. So, um, so join our cohort. I'll leave this up for a minute and then I'm gonna introduce our speakers as soon as I find out what questions you have. Questions? Actual actual days. Well, uh, uh, Amy, I can't tell you. We do the lectures on Wednesdays. Um, so you can count out Wednesdays for 10 weeks except for Thanksgiving. And, and then the, the groups are on Thursdays and Fridays and office hours are Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, okay, and it starts it starts October 4th and ends December 13th or 12th, someplace around there. Other questions? All right, well, seeing no questions, I'm going to introduce our speakers. Um, Srikanth Palavur started a company called Karayo Technologies. Um, he's in Bangalore, but planning to be spending a lot of time over here and, and I think moving the company. And Udara, oh gosh, Udara, I'll never get it right. Kular Athene <laughs> is um, the co-founder, CEO of He Health in Singapore. And I, I think I'm going to ask um, Udara, would you start off and tell people sort of that very quickly what you're doing and sort of how you came to do this? Thanks, Stephanie. I would love to. Um, <clears throat> hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yudara. If it's difficult, um, you can call me you. Uh, no problem. Uh, easy. And I'm a consultant, physician, and a university lecturer. I used to be, at least. Uh, and then um, I started a company called He Health. Um, it's a digital diagnostic company working on infectious diseases and mostly on STI, sexually transmitted infections, which is a global problem. And we have developed the AI-driven technology to detect them through your phone. And um, I'm going to walk you through uh, my entrepreneurship journey. And this is the first time I started a company. And uh, how it started is um, as a physician, um, when the COVID hits, um, I realized Singapore is some country who have really good healthcare system and um, world class, I would say best in the world. And um, even with that, uh, we realized COVID make us so weak. We couldn't do anything. People were dying and we had really trouble finding where the people are coming from, where the actual COVID infection is uh, spreading, how to catch the infection faster. And me as a physician and an innovator who was lecturing in university, I thought, okay, we really have to step out of our comfort zone to do something about it. That's my idea of, okay, I need to do something. But then obviously, um, as an entrepreneur, I had no clue of what to do when it comes to starting a company or a startup. And I was looking around, I was talking to people. And then, of course, I, in the internet, I came um, across this um, Stephanie's course. And then this is one of the first ones um, when I started the entrepreneurship journey, my startup journey. What I took, which literally changed uh, how I should do it. When I, as I said, when I first started, um, the, the first question is, know how how am i going to do this um what are the things need to do what is the structure i should follow obviously i have no time to do it a full um, university course or take an entrepreneurship class and then i was looking at something which i can do while i'm still in my full-time job as a physician so then i realized um stephanie's course is a very nice fit i can take it at night and then of course there are discussion groups uh, which i was a diagnostic group um, so we can actually talk to people there are um, guiding people and then you can get all this information. 
so that okay i said okay that's that's really good and then um i'm i'm kind of taking my first steps and of course the next step is to to do successful in this journey you have to have a solid network you need to have people to talk to and ask questions and be surrounded with uh, that's the most important thing i would say to me and of course i'm from singapore san francisco is exactly opposite of um singapore uh, which is 15 hours away uh, and I needed to know people how they do it. Even though I'm doing it in Singapore, I realized what I was envisioning is something completely out of the box. And I had a little bit of trouble convincing people in Singapore. So when I look at the Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley is something the culture is completely different. I feel people are more receptive to crazy ideas and they, they love the out of box thinking. So I kind of felt, okay, I'm in the right place. So one of the biggest thing is, when I was mingling with the classmates, I felt, okay, there are a lot of uh, people from Bay Area, from Silicon Valley, and they kind of start appreciating. And the most important thing, the most favorite part of me is to stay behind the class and then catch up with the lecturers and people after the class for that 15 to 30 minutes during the question and answers so that get them to give you a little bit of um, their own perspective of what you are doing. That really helps me. So my entrepreneurship journey at that time was slowly moving forward. And then, of course, the next part is as an entrepreneur, I'm an academic um, university professor, physician, moving into a startup, kind of feel alone because you are you are doing by yourself. And in the hospitals, you have a massive group of uh, people surrounding you. So I feel one of the biggest struggles I faced as a startup founder is to convince the people around you that this is going to be successful, this is something going to change the world, but most importantly, to convince yourself that this is something you can do it for the longer run and convince every day that all the difficult things you are facing is worth doing it for. So how to do that or how I did it is that I met amazing people through the class who have actually done the same thing, who was uh, academics, who was uh, physicians or PhD scientists, move into the places. Then when I talk to them, I feel, okay, I'm not the only one. That gave me the confidence, courage to go all the way. And long story short, where am I now and where I start up? Um, we have raised the funds um, uh, from world-class um, investors, including San Francisco investors, Silicon Valley investors. We are working with three large um, universities in US, um, including uh, famous ones um, in Silicon Valley and, of course, uh, in uh, Boston. And uh, I'm in the process of packing my bags and moving to Silicon Valley full time right now. And now I'm spending half the time in Silicon Valley and half the time in Singapore trying to make that transition. But the most important part in the last step, when I moved to San Francisco, I never felt it's a new city because I already know people, I'm connected to the ecosystem and I, I, I can immediately kind of uh, spread my wings and you know do the thing. So I felt this all the way to me was a perfect uh, blend of everything I needed. Uh, of course, not the depth, but um, to me to get things started. And of course, through that connections, you can go into a... Thing which you need to go into the depth and then find for me i'm diagnostics person and then it's a very uh, different from the general ones but there's a, always a starting point so that's how i did it i think um as i shared hearing from people who have done it and hearing their experience makes the bigger sense i hope this makes sense and um, you can find me in linkedin if you need any questions or you can ask um stephanie she will you know, let's, let's see if anyone has questions right now Anyone have something they want to ask you, Dar? He's got a really interesting company. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in what he's doing, um, and it's it's good to hear really how the class was helpful in the process of of starting this. Um, and he's a little bit different because he's in a different country and is actually going to move here, which is what we always encourage people to do if they want to tap into our our ecosystem. Omer, go ahead. Yeah, uh, my question is, uh, I'm guessing that you already had an idea originally prior to joining the course. How did it change as you went through the course and then like later on? Thanks, Omar. Um, actually, when I joined the course, I already started the startup. So, but I was in the very early stage. We were not funded. Um, we had no connections at that time to the U.S. ecosystem. I was primarily doing things and struggling in Singapore. Because uh, my company, what we do, we are the only company in the world who have such technology to detect STIs from your phone. So nobody is really getting it. Um, but 
Um, I felt when I talking to the people in the class, especially from um, Silicon Valley, their mentality is very different. They are willing to take risks. They are willing to hear out of box thinking. That gives me the courage. Okay, I'm not crazy and I'm doing something which actually can work. You know, if we, if it was in Singapore, we were in a point that I thought, okay, it's not going to work. Nobody's believing in me. But when it comes to Silicon Valley, it was a completely different story. People are like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. That actually works. You know, and it's a completely different, like, I would say 180 degree different view from Singapore to uh, Silicon Valley. But of course, Singapore is changing too slowly. There are a lot of companies from Silicon Valley going and setting up venture capital ones and stuff um, in Singapore. But at that time, which is two years ago, one year plus, I think. Yeah, I was struggling in Singapore. But of course, now things are very different. Uh, we raise money. We have, uh, I mean, simply put, um, WH and CDC in the annual reports mentioned my startup last year, a few months back. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions for you, Dara, before I turn to Srikanth? Okay, Srikanth. Hey, uh, uh, I'm Srikanth Palavur, talking to you from uh, uh, Bangalore, India. My startup is Cario Technologies, which focuses on building an artificial intelligence platform for the field of cytogenetics. Cytogenetics is about doing chromosome analysis for identifying various chromosomal disorders. I had been part of this uh, UCSF course last year. In fact, uh, uh, when when I started onto this course, so so see, basically I come from a background of of technology. I'm not from the biology background. I'm I'm a, uh, a technologist with IT and artificial intelligence background, and I was passionate about some problem statement related to this. So, which I have been working on on uh, past few years. I have worked in a company as a product director before this, where I mined this together with a doctor, together with a cytogenetics doctor, and then from the point that I identified this problem, it became like a passion for me that we should try to solve this. And 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 then uh, you know during the COVID time the, the thought process was going a lot more vigorously, and that's where I found this uh, you know from all the way from India I found this course from uh, uh, Stephanie that was coming out from UCSF which I found as a great starting platform for this. So I, I registered for this course and and then meanwhile I had in a small way started this startup, and and then the course did help me a lot in terms of reinforcing as what Yudara was telling, like reinforcing that what you are trying to do is something needed in this world. First of all, that's the biggest doubt we have got, right? We all are passionate about our prop, our own areas where we want to try out an entrepreneurship, but is the world willing to hear you at least, right? Will, will the people in the world uh, try to give a chance for you to talk about this and then is this something relevant to the world so this this uh, doing this course came at the right time for me it gave me the opportunity to interact with people both from the um, uh, uh, lectures that i attended as well as the uh, co-participants that were part of this and and then the smaller groups as as um, uh, stephanie was mentioning the smaller uh, groups I, I was part of the diagnostics groups right so the discussion within that has been great really it did help me reinforce that okay what i'm trying to do definitely makes sense and then i should go for this in in a much uh, vigorous way right that that confidence comes from the Silicon Valley culture. And then, uh, you know, uh, the whole thing started up in, into a, in getting into a much better shape for me. And then uh, uh, at this point where we are, so we have, uh, uh, we have got a, uh, a product developed. We are trying it out uh, as far as uh, a minimum viable product development is concerned. We have done, we have tried it out here in India. And then we, uh, I, my startup also got selected in, in Berkeley Skydeck. Berkeley Skydeck is one of the top five university-based startup accelerators in the world. And then as, as a part of this development, so uh, this is uh, getting incubated in University of California, Berkeley. I okay. do travel yeah. between India and Berkeley. We, we need yeah. to stop here, but thank you, Srikanth. Yeah, so Srikanth also is back and forth and has spent a bunch of time because he's in a, a well-known accelerator um, in Berkeley itself. So, um, so it's been great to have him around and I'm sure we're going to be seeing more of him. Questions for Srikanth? Any entrepreneurship questions or? All right. Um, last 
First, I'm going to ask Carrie just to say a few words. Carrie isn't starting a company at the moment, I don't think, Carrie, but she um, was in class. She's an alum. So do you want to just spend a minute with your perspective? Yeah, I'm I'm in a fortunate position of being able to lead the, all the fun parts of an R&D startup effort without being the one who has to do the fundraising. And mm -hmm. I'm using everything here. I actually was in that role just before I took the class last year, and it gave me I guess it, it gave me a network and constant consultation opportunities as I did this. So I found a very low risk way of doing startup entrepreneurship within the context of another more established company. So it was really entrepreneurship. Um, and it also, it influenced my path. Originally I'm a software and AI person who's worked on some hardware devices in the past before I worked in big tech. Then when I moved into clinical work in healthcare as a behavioral health clinician, I started having inventions that were on the software side. The reimbursement models really, really affect what's gonna work out for you. Um, and so one of the things this class did was give me frequent opportunities to try to figure out what kinds of inventions should I even pursue to bring to market? How is that gonna affect the affiliations that I create? And just you know anything that startup you're going through all these phases. You're not the same company week after week or month after month. So I'm actually planning to take the class again this year, not because I failed to pay attention last time, but because I paid so much attention. And I know that the rich opportunities, especially with the sector breakouts, um, I wasn't, I, I had a conflict earlier, Stephanie, so I'm not sure if you, how much you talked about those, but it's like a safe place to really be asking questions, listening to people who've been there, if you have questions on your own because you're doing an entrepreneurial thing or you're thinking about it, I, I just, I don't know how you find this any other way. And so I'm just very grateful to have this class. Thanks, Carrie. I hope you join again. I love having you in class. You have, always have great questions and comments. So <laughs> hope you can do that. Okay, we have a few more minutes. I just want to open it up for general questions or comments. You can just raise your hand. Um, if anything you want to know, I know there were some questions about when the class happens. Everything's on Zoom. Um, everything is recorded. So if you miss it, that's fine. Uh, you'll be able to pick it up on the weekend or whenever you've got free time. The class alternates between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Pacific. 9 a.m. is a good time for Europe. Uh, 5 p.m. is a good time for well, at least some of Asia. Sorry, Sri Kant, if we knew. We haven't had a lot of people from India before, so, um, but you're going to be here a bunch. And, um, but it, it works for a, a good part of, of Asia. So, questions? Uh, I have um, a question. So, this is more towards um, Carrie or um, Udara. Like, uh, how do you find co founders? Are these people that you worked with before, or were they kind of like connected to you by VCs? Um, thanks, Alisa. Actually, um, I started with my co-founder in Singapore. So to me, it was building the ecosystem from there. But I would say some of the connections I made um, during the class, they were in the exploratory phase. Uh, so, But um, what I do is a very unique area, so hardly it can match. But I think it's a good place, I would say, if you're looking for a co-founder, it's always a good place to give it a shot and see whether there's a match. Yeah, and... And for me, I was selected by people I already knew to be part of their effort. And you know, I'm planning to use the same process as I mature some of my software ideas that I would lead on my own. Um, but funny enough, there's actually a course um, that I remember last year was offered around team building. And I think they covered that exact question. So I, I can't think of a question that I've had in the course of this entrepreneurship journey that hasn't somehow been addressed by the topic material or having somebody in a breakout who, who's a mentor who's willing to answer your question. So um, keep coming back. Thanks, Gary and Yudara. Who else? Those are the questions. I think we have two questions in the chat. Um, oh, great. Okay. Let me, let me get on there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jeremy, do you want to ask your question? People have to get in the habit of asking, putting on their camera and asking their questions what we do. He can't. Okay. All right. I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask it. 
for you because uh, I'm reading it. Let's see. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, now I've just lost his question. In the meantime, I'm going to answer Susan's question, uh, which is yes. Um, sorry, no, you don't have access to the prior recordings, but everything in this class is um, is available. Uh, Savina, do you want to ask your question? Okay, nobody, nobody wants to step up and answer questions, so I guess I'm going to read it. Um, I'm researching learning from scratch uh, for a health tech SaaS idea. Is this a good topic for your classes? Sure, lots of people are interested in health tech kinds of things. And we have people who, um, who are from that world who are in mentors. So um, it definitely would be an appropriate kind of interest to have. Uh, Jeremy wants to know uh, how often discussions take place. I think by that you mean the small groups. Um, you know, it's every, I think it's every two or three weeks uh, this year. And they're at different times for different time zones and different days. We mix it up. So if you're a diagnostics person, you don't always have to be there at nine o'clock Pacific on Thursdays. We try to move it around so that more people can actually access this. Um, okay, any other questions? I think, uh, Stephanie, I think we have one more in the chat. Oh, okay. um, how I use that. Um, um, Amy? Let's see. Who is it? Amy. Uh, okay. Amy, okay. Um, Amy, are you? Okay. Oh, do I give feedback on business models? Um, yeah, sure. If you come to, to do... Um, office hours with me I'm happy to talk about whatever so you know that's it's a great use of of the time that you have is to bring up whatever's on your mind I mean people will ask all kinds of things in office hours from like what should I do about my career to I you know I'm not getting along with my co-founder to um you know how do I find out how big a market is and so on so yeah it's just open it's an open discussion uh no agenda the agenda is yours. Um, all right, well, I'm cognizant of the time. I wanna thank everybody for coming today, especially um, my alums who came, uh, Srikanth, Yudara, and Kerry. Uh, and I know there've been some others here I didn't have a chance to call on and um, appreciate that. We will send this recording around to people so you can go back and see anything you might have missed or forgotten. I will stick around for um, as long as people want to stick around and chat about whatever. So I'll, I'll stick around after, after we're done here. Um, I encourage you to join this class now. Um, it's going to happen. It's happening in about a month. And um, there's no guarantee there's another one. There's certainly nothing else happening um, in a year. So if this is interesting, tell your colleagues, uh, other people who you think might be interested and, and come join us. It's, um, it's my absolute favorite thing to do all year is to be a part of this class, to lead the class um, and to meet all of you. So thank you for coming and, and I'll, I'll stay on on the, the Zoom.